So the second thing we need to do is understand how platforms are evolving. And the reason for this is that we can leap ahead and start where there is real best practice rather than just emulating what has been done in the past. So to bring this to life, let me describe how network effects are evolving. Remember, network effects are really all about defensibility. If you can create these network effects, it's very difficult for other players to compete with you. Now, most businesses actually have some sort of network effect. If you sell a product or service, you probably have some sort of distribution network. You may run, either run your own retail uh, chain or you may work with a, a series of distributors. But the value for your business is really dependent on the number of customers you have. It's quite a linear equation there. Now, in the, in the traditional world, there's quite a few what we might call one-sided network effects. And the best example of this is the telephone network. So a telephone company provides the service to you and me to speak to anyone. The service isn't any use if I can only speak to one person. There's value if I can connect to anybody I want to. So there is a network effect. There's value for me as the consumer to be participant in this network, but it's one-sided. The company makes money from the users of the service. And uh, in mathematical terms, the value is much better than a traditional linear business. Value tends to be the square of the number of users, in fact. So it's better than this, um, but it's still not a full multi-sided platform business. So in the digital world, we're suddenly seeing many more multi-sided platform businesses which are based on two-sided network effects. So the more consumers you have, the more producers you have, and vice versa. And if you can get it right, both parties are paying you to interact on your platform. Now, it's interesting that while Uber is a very successful company, for example, its defensibility is actually quite low. What, what is there to stop another company, there's Lyft and there's MyTaxi and others, from providing the same type of service? In many ways, their defensibility, they're quite vulnerable in terms of their business model. So what we're starting to see now is a, is a new breed or maybe a development or innovation within this model. And this is allowing the producers on one side or the consumers to interact with each other, to collaborate with each other, to either create new types of solutions or create new types of demand for producers. And a good example of this is, is eBay, where eBay originally or was competing with classified businesses, which were offering quite a limited set of service, or products on this side here. What eBay allowed is niche communities to uh, create supply or create demand to exchange and transact between each other. And this is where many platform businesses are trying to evolve at the moment. And if you can get that right, your value actually increases quite tremendously. So in mathematical terms, rather than, rather than n squared, it's two to the power of n, two to the power of the numbers of participants in your network. What that creates is an even steeper exponential curve if you can get that right. Facebook operates like this. It enables small niche communities. It, it facilitates small niche communities to establish themselves connect with each other and interact with others as well. Now, where the world is going is something, and I think this is the great opportunity for incumbent businesses, is going somewhere even further. We might call this multi-sided, collaborative, O2O -O networks. O2O -O stands for, a bit complicated, online to offline. So whereas these types of businesses have been mainly online platforms, the opportunity now is to mix offline with online. This is your traditional business here, serving your traditional customers, but supported by a platform business model, adding greater value to both parties here. So the opportunity here now, once you've established this platform, is also to easily integrate with other platforms and also to allow you to enter new markets. And if you can get that right, then the equation gets even better. The value is not only the sum of your users, the number of users that you have, but also it has two to the power of n as well. Now, 
when we talk about modeling the value to a traditional company, I'm going to show you a few examples in a later module about why this is so attractive and show how the valuation of a company and the growth rates can be improved if you can adopt this. But this is where we need to go and think about planning for rather than just replicating what has been done in the past.